So, Michelle, tell me a bit about these, what is it, 311 and counting? No, it's actually, uh, it's a nice story because uh, when we decided to do this exhibition, we asked the Stephen Maysell studio if they would uh, work, this with that, with, work with this with us. So they were uh, happily agreed. And then we started to research uh, all the covers. My friends from York, from 032C, had already published a, a long bit of these covers in his magazine. So then when I got this idea of doing, why don't we do a show with all this? So we asked the Steven Nessel studio. And uh, at a certain point, they had uh, tried to do the inventory for the covers. And uh, he had done so many, right? I thought quickly in my mind, well, 20 years, a little bit more, 10 years, 10 covers per year, for plus two covers for haute couture, special issues, that mean 220 covers. But when we did the whole research, you see that in some covers, he, he had did three covers, three images for three different covers. Then there were fallout covers, then were triple fallout covers, then were triple fold. So it was like an endless research. So actually, when you see the year catalog uh, festival, the title of the exhibition is 311 uh, covers and counting. And the title, when we printed the Stephen Mansell book, is 317 covers and counting. And once the book is, was printed, three days ago, Stephen Maisel studio called me again, Michelle, we found three more covers that were lost. Because sometimes Italian Vogue, you know, which is a very interesting, uh, innovative magazine, did back covers of the magazine. Or other supplements they had, we had missed. So the official title of this exhibition is 317 uh, and counting. And how is it that one Photographer did all the covers for what the past 20 years of Italian Vogue has that ever happened? Well, no, that's the, 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 main, the most amazing story, too. It's not only uh, some fantastic visuals being produced over these past 20 and a little bit more years, but was Stephen Maisel started working with Franca Susani earlier in his collaboration for Perle and Louis magazine when she was editor in chief of those magazines back in the days, and then he started the collaboration with her in July '88. Uh, and from that date till today, he's been the most prominent and most important uh, for fashion photographer in the world. Every issue of uh, Italian Vogue, he doesn't did only the cover, but he also did the main leading story, which sometimes lasts even like 40 pages. Or in sometimes, for example, he did the whole issue, right? For example, you see here the July covers of last year with uh, all these black girls, which is a statement. He did four covers only with black girls. He the, so the whole issue with uh, black girls. You can say, okay, it's very classical photography. Yes, it is very well crafted photography, but it's a statement because, as you know, black models are not very present in the fashion world, right? So he's, uh, he has incredible relationship with Italian Vogue that has allowed him to do all this amazing, amazing body of work for more than 20 and something years. So it's more than any art director has ever done ever in a magazine. So I think this is an historical event to be able to uh, to uh, to uh, gather together all this work. I mean, it's it's an iceberg, of course. I mean, if we had to do a Steven Maisel exhibition, I mean, I wouldn't know where to start with, right? This was an easy job because it's only the covers, right? So it is amazing, I mean, because he is not only he has not been only uh, uh, predicting fashion and uh, defining fashion, but he's also been commenting on our uh, on our political world and social world. For example. He did covers, maybe we can see a couple here, uh, on cleansing, I know you remember this issue, on supermodel goes to rehab, right? So he's, you see in a, in, a, in a hospital, all these models going to rehab, cleaning their souls, cleaning their blood. Uh, for example, it was a very provocative issue. You can see here, for example, another great issue, which was the main cover of this issue. Evangelista starring, being completely chopped in pieces, being uh, completely remade by plastic surgery. That's a very interesting uh, showcase. This is the extraordinary issue when he takes a tape on the war, and like you can imagine an Iraq set and soldiers and models. So he's been not only uh, doing fashion, greatest images, but he's been also commenting about society and what's happening in our world today. For example, we see this 2005 fantastic issue of the Hollywood style when Steven was uh, faking paparazzi photography, right? So he has a very keen eye, a very interesting, uh, uh, I think no one else in the world today has uh, this, uh, this uh, eye and this uh, mind and this technique and this everything. He can put mega productions when you see some of these uh, uh, shoots.
last usually one or two days, believe it or not. They are so well produced. The credits at the end are like, I put it for the short film, there's like 40 people involved, right? In between the set design and, uh, I mean, art directors and uh, designers. So, uh, he's been uh, not only challenging and trying the image world, but, uh, but basically making social comments. He, uh, of course, Franca had the final letter, Franca Sosani, which believes that she allowed us to do this exhibition in the book, uh, with this material too, because she has allowed uh, Italian Vogue not to be a regular Vogue. You know, many Vogues, like Portuguese Vogue, and Spanish Vogue, and Korean Vogue, is like a stamp, trademark. They all look the same. Italian Vogue is unique. And for 20 and more years, Franca Sosani has been pushing the envelope. He's been demanding for uh, sophistication, demanding for incredible images, a very high level of, I mean, think there's no other magazine also in the story of, uh, of, uh, of these contemporary magazines that have been so challenging over the years. Bits and pieces, right? There's independent magazines or underground magazines coming in now and then. But you have to see this, this is like a, a household name, it's Vogue, right? A very innovative uh, Vogue. Uh, uh, so we have uh, all the covers from day one till uh, the last, which is in the stands today, which is survival mode. Right? And also you can analyze here also not only uh, the covers and photography itself, but the models. When the supermodel era came in, when Isabella Rossellini was important, when did the Evangelista, she, she's all, all, all over, you see. When Bridget Hall came in, Carla Bruni was there. Uh, you can see how styles also evolved in clothes. You can see how typography also evolved during the, the time. When Frank asked me, Michel, are you going to do the show only with pictures? No, of course not. I'm interested in the actual document, right? Which means the logo, the typeface, it's interesting to see how the typefaces evolved also in the history of these 20 years of uh, design. It's also interesting to see when the barcode arrives on a cover, right? At what date computers and laser readers arrive on the cover? At a certain point we said, oh, we, maybe we should take them out, right, with the computer. But we said, no, let's leave it like this because it's a document, right? And then, of course, there are some covers were hard to, very innovative, also hard to, uh, to express, like this one, because this cover was this, this size, right? And it was a folder. So it's also this, all these experiments that have been done by Italian Road, right? Which are quite unique, I, I, I must say. And just